Hey, I'm Chris Epp from Make Everything, and today we're setting up a forge and building a stand with an adjustable work rest. Check it out. This looks pretty nice. Made in Italy. Propane regulator. Hose. Marshmallow. Another marshmallow for later. Uh, this feels like a fire brick. Oops. <laughs> I amazingly didn't break it. Just chipped it a little bit. This thing is going to get so freaking hot. Oh, the bricks go in the forge, okay. We're going to be like, huh. This is a really straightforward thing. Stuff the stuff, the stuff in there. Probably should wear gloves for that, though. Where could the rubber gloves be? Where are the rubber gloves? Got them. Not too crazy about the fact that this whole thing is painted. Like all this paint's gonna have to melt off of here. Why would I wanna breathe that? I don't wanna breathe in that. I have no idea if this is what I'm supposed to be doing. I guess I could always stuff some more of this in later if this like dissolves or I don't know. Seems legit. I don't want to breathe that in. All right, it works. It definitely gets hot. So it's time to build this thing a proper stand and I think I've got a good idea on how to make it a little more versatile. All right, so now that I know that the forge works, fired it, uh, I wanna build a stand for it, but I want to be able to hold material that's in the forge depending on the length of the material. So I want to do like a pull out kind of thing. So, and I feel like this is probably like a good height. Nah, maybe higher. Maybe like, maybe the height of this bench. So then I can see what's going on in there. And it's, it's a good like arm tree. So this height, let's sketch something up. Okay, so to start off, um, I just measured out the forge and then decided, you know, very simple sort of like table-like structure. Um, I know I have some fire brick that I want to put on the top. So very simple. And I'm going to be building this out of one by one, um, one by one steel square. And I'm going to start off with 16th inch wall material because I'm going to be doing this drawer slide sort of thing. And uh, I have some three quarter inch round tubing that I'm going to use on the inside of that. So just using my little metal cutting chop bandsaw to cut up these pieces and nothing too precise, just sort of getting through everything. And then here's that three quarter inch steel tubing 
and those are going to be inside and I'm just deburring everything cleaning up the edges on the 2x72 grinder I'm gonna sort of lay everything out here figure out exactly what I'm doing my thought is that if I were to cut a channel in the 16th wall uh, one by one tubing I can thread a bolt into that three-quarter inch round and I can basically make my own drawer slide out of it now I could do this on the milling machine and you know mill a channel but you know a lot of a lot of people most people don't have a milling machine so I figured I would do something uh, and use a tool that a lot of people have access to so I'm just using an angle grinder here um, I started out with an abrasive wheel and it just like kind of sucked I was getting totally like shot up with sparks and um, it was kind of a pain. So I, I switch over to one of these diamond wheels. It's like a diamond metal cutting wheel that's supposed to last a really long time. Um, I don't know. It was okay. I, I think I prefer the, the abrasive wheel because the abrasive wheel you can also grind with. That, the diamond wheel is like a Lennox. And you can see, you know, the wheel doesn't get any smaller, you know, because it doesn't abrade down. And maybe it cut a little bit faster, but I'm not sold on it. It was like $15, and I don't know that, uh, I don't know that it really was worth it. But anyway, so I had drilled those two holes in either ends of the track, and then I just cut out the two channels with the grinder. Pretty straightforward. Um, and now that's done. I'm just making sure to put those pipes in there, and that'll actually take and knock some of the burrs off. You can see I'm pulling a big steel burr out of there. Still got good action. It still slides back and forth pretty nice. I'm just still trying to clean it up a little bit with that, that cutting wheel. So now that that part of it is completed, I just made a couple marks on the actual tubes themselves. Brought them back over to the drill press. Now I'm drilling out with a number 7 drill bit. Um, which is what you use for a quarter 20 thread tap and uh, a little bit of tapping oil I just throw a tap right in the drill just tap those holes out real quick and I'm using a little allen head screw and basically that just gives me a travel stop it gives me somewhere where they have to stop at the back and somewhere that they have to stop at the front so you can't accidentally pull this drawer out all the way and have it like fall on the ground or something which I, I think is important so now that's done, I can cut up basically the rest of the frame material. Um, again, I'm just using a little bandsaw. Uh, I picked this thing up on Amazon. It was like 200 bucks. It's great. I've used a million different saws to cut steel, and I prefer the bandsaw the best because it doesn't distribute stuff all over my shop. It doesn't spray, you know, um, slag and sparks and metal shavings everywhere. It keeps everything nice and contained. It cuts very accurately. So I'm using my little homemade 90-degree uh, corner clamp to keep everything nice and square, just tacking everything up. And the corner clamp is, is really simple, very easy to make, and uh, really makes things go a lot faster when you're doing a welding project like that. Now that it's, everything's tacked in place, I'm just giving a, a nice good weld on the inside, make sure everything stays nice and well held together. I don't want to heat this up too much because I don't want to warp any of the steel and make those drawer slides, you know, not really function anymore. Sort of just testing out how they work together. And now I can weld the front piece on. Before I weld it on, I, uh, I want to do an adjustable height uh, tool rest as well. So before I attach anything, I'm going to take some of this uh, three quarter inch solid bar and cut it out and I'm, I'm actually grinding a like a flat spot in it almost like a keyway so again this could also have been done with the milling machine but I wanted to use things that were a little more accessible to everybody so you could do this with uh, with a file honestly you don't need to use a belt grinder like this and now that that's done I'm switching in to an annular cutter which is basically just a carbide hole saw in my drill press and I'm drilling out a hole in that crossbar now what this is going to allow me to do is it's going to allow me to put a bolt through there and lock on to that adjustable height tool rest and um, you know quickly adjust it up and down depending on the type of material that I'm using. 
So there's a little more slop in there than I wanted. I just didn't really have the correct size drill bit, but it's going to be fine once, uh, once everything's tightened down. And now what I'm going to be using here is this is a, a 3 8 weldable nut. Now it's not, it's not a traditional zinc plated hardware store nut. This is a specialized, uh, raw steel nut that I got from McMaster card. It has little tabs on it, um, to hold onto the weld. And the purpose behind this is that, you know, by welding it, you're not burning all that zinc oxide off and, um, uh, you know, killing yourself quickly. So I recommend if you're doing any sort of projects that involves uh, adding threads or nuts, you know, order your set of set of the order, order yourself some of these weldable nuts, and um, save your lungs a little bit. Now I'm just welding a little bar to a Allen key head screw, um, and that's black oxide coated, which also isn't great to breathe, but you didn't have any raw steel, so. Now I've got a nice little quick lever that I can screw into those threads and lock in my adjustable height tool rest. Now that's all done. I'm just welding up the frame a little bit more, tacking everything into place with that, that front, uh, front of the drawer slide. Finishing welding everything. It's kind of hard to find the right position. You have to sort of use whatever you can. And you can see how that tool rest now can be adjusted up and down. And I'm using another piece of three quarter inch round stock for the actual tool rest surface. Uh, and this I want to make sure is perfectly square. So I'm spending a little extra time just squaring that up and uh, tacking it and then welding it fully so that it's nice and strong. Um, I wanted to use round stock here because I want to limit the surface area that my material is touching because uh, I don't want it to lose any heat. I don't want to act as a heat sink. So I want to limit the surface area. Now it's time to build the top of the uh, the top of the forge stand. And now this is a this is a pizza brick from an exterior pizza oven that a buddy of mine who's a landscaper picked up and uh, when he was disassembling a pizza oven he offered it up to me. So stuff is uh, about an inch and a half thick, and I don't really know what it's made out of. I mean, it's some, obviously some sort of fire brick. I've got my respirator on because I don't think it's going to be good to breathe. I start cutting with the grinder and it was just terrible. It gunked up the grinder, it was not going well. So I busted out the big guns and this is a still gas uh, concrete cutting saw and that did the job really nice. So now that's done, getting back over to the top frame and just drilling two quarter inch holes, one on each side. And what that's gonna allow me to do is gonna allow me to bolt down the fire brick to the frame um, just taking a long reach pencil and getting some marks in there and then using a SDS hammer drill to pop some holes in there so that I can run a quarter inch bolt. And that'll just make sure that this top never comes off. The top is pretty substantially heavy, um, heavier than it looks, which is good. I, you know, I want to add that weight and stability to this thing. And I'm choosing just to use two bolts because I really just think it's enough. Now the forge will sit right on top of there. Now I'm marking out a couple spots where the feet are because I actually want to drill holes in the in the legs of the forge and bolt the actual forge right to the pizza brick as well. So I saw me drill those holes with the SDS. Now I'm just marking up the hole locations into the bottom of the feet of the forge. I'll tip the forge on its side and I'll just use a handheld drill to pop some holes in the bottom down there that'll allow me to run those screws right through the legs of the forge, right through the fire brick and keep this all nicely bolted together, nice and tight. Kind of a tricky operation to do because there's the bolt sticking out of the bottom. It doesn't really want to sit flat on anything, but it's just four bolts and now everything is going to be nice and well held together. You can see how that drawer works and with the tool rest on there, I can adjust it and everything's exactly how I want it to be. So now with the tool rest done, I have to cut up some material for the legs and for the bottom section. So uh, I'm going to make the bottom rectangle first and for this I'm going to cut 45 degree uh, miters in my tubing so that I can get nice sealed up edges 
and I'm going to make the bottom section of the sort of table stand the same size as the top. In my case, it was uh, 21 inches deep by 13 inches wide. So I'm just cutting out my 45s. Again, this little bandsaw thing is great. Um, it cuts everything really well. And you can see all that pile of metal dust. I'd much rather it be there than floating around the shop in the air. Bandsaws like this don't leave a lot of airborne particles. So sort of more of the same, just using my little corner clamp, clamping everything up, getting everything square. Uh, you know, since this thing has to stand on the ground, I don't want it to teeter. I don't want it to wobble. I want to make sure that everything is nice and flat, nice and square as, as best and as parallel as I can. It's also it's just good practice to, you know, anytime you do a welding project or a woodworking project, even if it's just for yourself, even if it's not important, you just want to keep that level of quality running constantly. You want to always be doing, doing things properly. And here are uh, some three inch casters I picked up from Amazon. I've used these on a lot of different things in my shop and they're great. They're like about five bucks a caster and um, definitely worth it. So instead of bolting these, I just decided to plug weld them right on there. So uh, they're zinc coated. I should have ground them off, but I have pretty good ventilation in the shop. So wasn't too worried about it. Now I've got the vertical legs and I made sure to do the math so that I know when I'm all done, the vertical legs are going to be the correct height to get me at around 36 inches to the top of the fire brick. That was the measurement of my bench that I had figured out. So again, with going with things being square, you see how I'm, you know, really double and triple checking all my corners, running a square on both sides, making sure everything is really, really straight. Because the last thing I want to do is have one of these legs kicked out and, you know, when I weld it all in place, have this thing have a wobble in it. You know, a uh, forge is a dangerous enough thing on its own. The last thing I need is for it to be sort of teetering around. So I'm just making sure that everything is really square and, uh, you know, rolling this thing in circles as I get each leg welded into place, tacked, and then fully welded. If you don't have one of these little wooden corner blocks, you got to make yourself one. All it is is two pieces of plywood, cut at a 90 degree angle on the miter saw, and it's totally irreplaceable for me in the shop. So now I've got that legs, the legs set up. I've got the base set up. I'm just sort of making everything, making sure everything fits. Now I'm actually just going to take the pizza brick off the top so that I can finish welding everything up. Got to grind a couple of my welds off, but other than that, this thing all lines up really well. Um, I had to just do like a little bit of flexing in place, but the fact that everything lined up immediately when I flipped it over means that everything is really close to square and very accurate. The stand itself has a good amount of weight to it, and now with that pizza brick on there, it's it's very substantial and I really feel comfortable that it's not going to tip over or really go anywhere. So I wanted to do a sheet metal bottom, uh, which is going to hold the propane tank. So, and I don't have any really great way to cut sheet metal. So here I'm just using the grinder. And again, I'm trying with that, uh, diamond wheel thing, but it kind of sucked for this application. It didn't really want to like rip the tubing. So I switched to a, just a regular, um, fiber cutoff wheel. And you can see this little trick I'm using with the straight edge. This works really great with cutting sheet metal with a grinder. You can really get nice cuts. Just put a piece of scrap wood on it and run your grinder edge right across it. I'm just cleaning everything up and deburring it. And this is a uh, 18 gauge, just mild steel. And here I'm just cutting out some corners for where the post legs are gonna be. And dropping it into place. And I want to use steel here because if any hot slag gets on it, I don't want it to be wood that could potentially light on fire. So now that that's in place, I'm just sort of tacking it in and trying to keep it from rattling. And now I decided that I wanted somewhere to hang tongs. I don't actually have any more than one pair of tongs. It's part of the reason why I need to get the forge going so I can make some tongs. But I, I have the general idea of you know what they're going to look like and what they're going to be. So I just took some... Uh, 5 eighths inch bar stock and I'm just making this little rack 
Um, very simple. I'm not going too crazy on this because I'm not really sure that it's going to be ideal for the type of tongs I'm making since I don't have any to test. I just made it up real quick, tack welded the corners, and I sort of just tacked it to the frame in uh, four spots so that if I really need to cut it off, I can. And that's basically the whole forge. The whole forge and the whole forge stand is complete. This is where my propane tank's going to go, and I'm going to hook it up to the gas and give it a test. So we're all done. I'm really excited to get using this thing. I've always wanted to have a forge in the shop. I've been making knives for a number of years, but I've never really done any blacksmithing. I've got a ton of things that I want to work on, a ton of little blacksmithing projects that, that I want to do. Um, and for me, the rolling stand I think is going to be really good. I got to make some tongs. I got to make some tools. So expect some blacksmith content coming. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, if you want to check out this particular forge, there's a link in the description. There's also other links to stuff I use, tools, all that good stuff down below. If you want to check us out on Instagram for more behind the scenes stuff of what goes on in the shop, follow us at Make Everything Shop. And uh, that's it. So thanks again, and I hope to see you on the next video. All right.